Hello everyone, today I'd like to show you how I made the valves for my new solar steam engine. So first let's start by grinding down these rings to the right diameter. Okay, so now these rings are ready and uh, I now need to make a seal which I'll make like this. I have a piece of 15 millimeter pipe at which I grind at an angle so it has a sharp edge and the inner diameter of this pipe is 12 millimeters and that's exactly the size I need to have. So if I now punch out a piece of Teflon, put on the earplugs. So that's a nice round piece of one millimeter Teflon. Now I need to make a hole in the middle. We'll just do that precisely, approximately, more or less exactly in the middle. Okay, so that's all that's in. Now I'll put a nut on here and the ring. And this piece of Teflon, another ring, and a nut screw it together. So now I have here a 20 millimeter aluminum pipe with a hole of 10 millimeters in it. And these rings I grind it to 8 millimeters diameter. The Teflon is 1 millimeter diameter. So if I now push it in, the Teflon will form around this 8mm ring and inside the 10mm pipe. So I'll now gently push it in without ruining my hand. Okay, so that's in. So now this piece is actually a little bit too long because I only need a that it extends about a millimeter from the ring that's underneath. So by eyeballing it, I determined that this, this is about a millimeter. Okay, so this one is ready. I need to make the other ones. So now all four valve pistons are ready. So if I now um, push them in this piece of aluminum and I heat it up with the hot air gun, then just like with the cylinders, the valve pistons will melt a little bit into the position they need to be in. So they have less resistance inside the valve housing. So that's above 100 degrees Celsius. So now we'll let it cool off and we'll see how well it goes. Okay, so now these uh, valve pistons fit nicely into this piece of pipe and they have some resistance but it's not a lot so that's uh, very nice. So now we need to make the right rod length and then the drill holes in here. So let's do that.
Okay, so now I've drilled these holes. And now I have to join these two holes with each other. So I'm doing this by drilling from the side. Oh, that's one. You need to do this very carefully because your drill can break very easily, so don't push too hard. Okay, so these are done. Now I need to remove the sharp edges on the inside, and of course you can't really get in there. But I have this file with a round tip, so I can just scrape that off. And also I need to make round edges to the length sides of this hole so that the piston seal won't slide into the hole and won't be cut off. Okay, all the sharp edges are gone now, so it's uh, quite smooth inside. And also drilled these 8mm holes. And this is the inlet hole and these are the exhaust holes. I also made this new rod so I can put the seals farther apart. And if I now put this in here, you can see that like this they're both closed off. And if it goes to this side, then steam can go to this hole. And the steam can go out on this side. If it push the other way, then steam will come out here. And the exhaust steam can go through there. So I will now mount it to the cylinder. And then I will make the end caps. I will first mount it to the cylinder. Because I just can't wait to see how it will power the cylinder. But first I need to countersink the ends of this valve piece. That will create a space for the o-ring to fit in. Okay, the ends are now uh, countersunk, as you can see. And I also sanded these spots because I'm going to glue them together with uh, this caulking which is a polyurethane based glue, which is very strong and because the forces on these holes is very small because it's uh, much less than uh, one square centimeter and the operating pressure of the steam engine is going to be around four bar. So that means four kilograms per square centimeter. So less than four kilograms per square centimeter will be pushing on this part. So, and this glue is much stronger than that. So it will probably work fine. And uh, it's also a nice test because I'm not 100% sure. And if I test it, I will be. So I'm now going to glue that on. And after that's dry, then we can do a test. Okay, so the glue is now completely dry, so I cannot pull this apart, so that's very good. And now I need to remove some glue. Okay, so now I'm gonna reassemble it. Okay, so it's now completely assembled and I glued in a piece of copper pipe with Loctite into the air inlet so I can feed it with this uh, air gun. So 
So that works uh, very well. So now we need to make the end caps and then uh, this one will be ready. So the next thing is that I need to make end caps. So the exhaust steam or gas or whatever will come out of these holes and not out of the end of this uh, valve housing. So we'll now make the o-ring and the end cap and the rods to keep it all together. So um, let's do a quick time lapse of that and then uh, I'll come back. Okay, so these parts are now ready and uh, I now need to make the seal for this rod because now of course the gas can leak out of this hole. So I'm going to do that by making a seal out of Teflon again because of course the rod is a moving part therefore I use Teflon so I don't need lubrication. I have here a piece of one millimeter Teflon and a piece of copper pipe and the inner diameter is uh, 20 millimeters. I filed an edge to this uh, piece of pipe so it is sharp. I have a round piece of Teflon. So, two and a half millimeter hole. Okay, so now the end caps are on, so the exhaust gas will come only out of these holes, then that steam can go to the next cylinder. Okay, now the way this uh, valve system works is you have two seals in a row, uh, actually four, but two seals on either side. And now, and if the, the steam pressure is always on the center hole, so these are the exhaust holes, and this is the steam entrance to the valve. And uh, if these two seals are on this side and these are on that side, then as you can see the line goes through here. So the steam will be injected on this side of the piston and the exhaust will be pushed out to the exhaust side. So if the valve pistons are now moved backwards, the steam goes through this port to this side of the piston and uh, the exhaust goes through this port to this exhaust side. Now the trick is with the valves that I use is that I need to use two seals in a row and we'll explain why. Okay, so I have now drawn here one section of the valve system and the thing is that if I use one valve seal then you would have a situation like this. So now the inlet steam is cut off to the 
outlet to the cylinder, but as soon as this seal is moving, like so, then the inlet steam can go around and go to the exhaust side. And uh, of course that's not something you want to have because then you lose a lot of energy. So to prevent that, I have two seals. So they're like this, so as soon as they're shifting, so now it's completely open to the outlet. And if it starts shifting, then this seal doesn't do anything anymore, but this seal still seals it off. So then it shifts to the other side, and this seal starts to seal it off here, and this one starts to open, and then it can let steam into the cylinder. And of course, it's the same thing for the other side. So this way I prevent wasting a lot of steam. Okay, so uh, this one's ready now, and of course I need to make the other ones. So uh, let's uh, do the old trick. Let's see if that still works. Oh no. Yes, this has happened before. I think it's because of uh, all this water here. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of these cute little duckies. Okay, attempt number two. Okay, well, it's not perfect, but you can just take these away because it's still a little bit wet there, I think. So now these ones are ready and uh, in the next video we'll make the frame for the steam engine because all the other stuff I need to make I need to mount on the frame so it's easier if the frame is ready but that's for the next video oh and I will post a drawing of the valves on Facebook and Instagram a week after I uploaded this video and I will put a link in the description and in the comments okay that's it everyone and more on the next video and uh, by then I might have exceeded the 10,000 subscriber count because I'm currently at 9,600 I believe so uh, all is going very well thanks to you so uh, thank you all so much for subscribing and if you haven't subscribed yet then please do and click the notification bell and see you next time